Well, I hope you've had a chance to watch the videos on the motor neuron and the sensor neuron. And what I want to do now is put this together into describing a reflex arc. Now, reflexes are very important to protect the body against damage. So, for example, if you touch something that's too hot, you'll get a reflex withdrawal from it. Or sometimes if you stretch a muscle, you'll get a reflex contraction of that muscle. And these reflexes are important. So suppose you're walking along and your leg collapses. Rather than fall over, other muscles will reflex into contraction to support the body and stop you from falling over. So the reflex is important to protect the body from damage. And also it nicely ties in together the motor and the sensory neuron. So let's first of all think about a sensory neuron. So here we have some peripheral sensory receptors and the nerve fibre of the sensory neuron, as we've seen before. As it approaches the spinal cord, there's going to be a little side branch with the nerve cell body. And this is going to be myelinated with the Remember the Schwann cells that comprise the myelin sheath? Nourish, protect, insulate, facilitate the process of saltatory transmission. The myelin in the Schwann cells. Now, the cell body of the sensor in neuron, as we've noted, there's a cluster of them all together because there's going to be thousands of individual nerve fibres comprising one of the larger spinal nerves. These are clustered together in this dorsal root ganglion near the spinal cord. And then this nerve is going to go into the spinal cord at a particular level of the spinal cord. At a particular level. So here we have the spinal cord in cross section. That's actually running up and down the plane of the board. Now, in the spinal cord, there's two sorts of matter. There's grey matter and there's white matter. And the grey matter forms an H shape. So the grey matter forms an H shape inside the spinal cord like that. So all the matter inside the H is described as grey matter. When you slice a spinal cord, you can see this as grey matter. The white matter is all around about the outside of the H. Actually, in life, the grey matter is more pinky colour. Grey describes the post-mortem colour. But the white matter around the outside is largely nerve cell fibres. It's white because of the myelin sheath, which is fatty, therefore white. And the grey matter in the middle <coughs> is grey because it's fairly rich in nerve cell bodies. And in a typical reflex, the nerve impulse is transducted here in the peripheral sensory receptors, travels along the dendrite of the sensory neuron to the sensory neuron and out and entering the spinal cord via the axon of the sensory neuron. And in the spinal cord it stops. Now some reflexes, the sensory neuron synapses directly with the motor neuron. At other times there's an interneuron or a relay neuron in between. So I'm going to draw a diagram with a relay neuron in between. So here we have a short relay neuron and that takes the impulse through the grey matter of the spinal cord. <clears throat> and we notice that the sensory neuron is not touching the relay neuron. There's a physical gap, and that physical gap, of course, is the synapse. There's always this physical gap. They don't actually touch. And if we're looking at this, say, from the top, then the sensory impulses, the afferent pathways, always go in the back of the spinal cord. So this is the back. Which makes sense because that's called the dorsal 
root ganglia. So dorsal and posterior and back all mean the same thing. The dorsal root is the posterior root. And the sensory impulses always take the root into the back. They always go into the back of the spinal cord. It's always a dorsal entry. So the impulse has come along here. Suppose we'd touch something really hot and we want to withdraw our hand. The impulse goes th along the axon of the sensory neuron, synapses with the relay neuron, and then the impulse travels through the grey matter and it reaches the front. So this is the ventral surface or the anterior surface of the spinal cord. And here there is the cell body of a motor neuron. Just there. Again, not touching, there's a physical gap called the synapse. So that synaptic gap is transmitted by chemical transmitter. That synaptic gap, the impulse is transmitted again by chemical transmitter. And then the axon of the motor neuron leaves the spinal cord and goes to the muscle. This of course is myelinated as well with the Schwann cells and the myelin sheath facilitated in the process of saltatory transmission so this is quick transmission rates could be up around about 100 meters per second so from the relay neuron or the interneuron synapsing across to the cell body of the motor neuron that causes the motor neuron to develop a new or to generate a new neuronal electrical impulse it depolarizes the cell body and that impulse then travels out along the axon of the motor neuron. The motor neuron of course is going to terminate in a muscle, so here's a skeletal muscle. When the acetylcholine is released from the motor end bulbs of the motor neuron, that will diffuse across onto the surface of the muscle, causing the muscle to depolarize, therefore causing the muscle to contract. And of course, the really clever bit is it's the right muscle that contracts to pull your hand, in this case, to pull your hand away from something hot. So this is called an arc because it kind of looks like an arc. You've got the three neuron system. As we've said, in some reflexes, the sensory neuron synapses directly with the motor neuron. And of course, muscles are arranged in pairs, in antagonistic pairs. So to move my arm up that way, the bicep has to contract. To move my arm down, the tricep has to contract. So if I want to contract my bicep to pull my arm away, at the same time, there has to be reciprocal relaxation of the tricep. Otherwise, my arm will just go stiff. So the reflexes are really clever because you get contraction of one muscle and simultaneous or essentially simultaneous relaxation of the other muscle to protect the body from damage. Now, at the same time, there's other components from the sensory neuron synapse with ascending neurons, which take the information up to the brain. So the brain does become aware of what's going on, but slightly later. So the body's protected because the impulse goes from the sensory through the spinal cord at that level to the motor, performing some activity that protects the body from injury or damage. And then the brain is informed to let it know what has happened. If the information had to go from the sensory neuron to the brain, where there's cognitive processing, then it had to go back again to the motor neuron. I think you can see there's going to be a delay and the person could have already fallen over or there could be tissue damage. So quick review, transduction at the level of the 
sensory receptor, new nerve impulse, dendrite of sensory neuron, cell body of sensory neuron, axon of sensory neuron, via the dorsal root into the grey matter. This is the dorsal horn of the grey matter here. Usually there's a relay neuron taking it across at that level, although not always. Synapses between the sensory and the relay and between the relay and the motor. New nerve impulse generated in the appropriate motor neuron, taking the impulse out, sometimes to contract a muscle, other times to relax a muscle to allow the movement that that muscle contraction facilitates. And of course the transmission is this very rapid saltatory transmission, maybe 100 meters per second, bouncing from one node of Ranvia to the next. Meaning that this can all happen very quickly to stop us from being injured.